In this fourth video, we are still considering the production phase of photography. This means production phase, we're referring to that part of the process where you have your camera in your hand and you want to reproduce part of the re reality as you see it or as you understand it or as you feel it. The main advice is try and experiment wisely. With modern digital cameras and with our phones, we are lucky because we do not have a limit to the number of pictures that we can shoot. If you find something that interests you, something that you might think is potentially interesting, work with it. Try to see it from different angles and don't be afraid to look ridiculous while bending or kneeling in the middle of the street looking for a different point of view. Interact respectfully with the subject. Try different frames and formats for your image. Don't waste time in reviewing the pictures on your screen while you are shooting, because you might lose the workflow and the momentum. Just every now and then, check if you are going in the direction that you want to. Maybe you want to frame a bit loosely in order not to miss important details or cut abruptly important parts of the scene or even worse of the subject. On a second stage, you can always cut the image according to your first impression. In street photography, but not only street photography, learning to use a technique called selective focus can give you another tool to express your contemplative vision. The combination of your chosen lenses and the aperture set results in a smaller or greater depth of field. What's depth of field? Depth of field is the portion of the image that looks to be in focus. The greater depth of field you can have, the more elements will be sharp and in focus in your picture which is something that we usually want to obtain in landscape photography. But in portrait photography and in street photography, you might want to isolate your subject from a noisy background, for example. So you can use this technique to highlight the elements that are prominent in your image. To obtain this, you need to remember that the shorter the focal length is, the greater the, the depth of field will be. This means that a telephoto lens will help you in having portions of the picture more blurred or sharp than others. Another factor to consider is the aperture. With a, with a large aperture, f2 or f4, you will get a minimal depth of field. So only where the focus is, the part will be sharp. Before and after the subject, you will get a blurry vision. Therefore, with a small aperture, you will have the maximum depth of field obtainable with your lens. Last but not least, the closest your subject is, the less the depth of field. So if you focus on something far away from you, you will have almost everything sharp. Needless to say, if part of an image is blurry and something is perfectly in focus, the eye of the observer will be infallibly captured by that element, which will become the real subject of your picture. So, if you can try to practice selective focus, or at least when you are going to see an image, notice 
what's more or less blurry, and what's in focus. Photography often deals with first impressions. If you watch yourself carefully, you can see a momentary purity of perception and action before the brain activates its memories and associations. Learn to savor and widen these moments. Meditation encourages this process this awareness and freshness of mind. But how can meditation do that? In our tradition, the broader awareness is obtained by focusing on the repetition of a single word or short phrase that we can call a mantra. And this is paradoxical, because by focusing on something very specific, we are expanding our awareness and exercising the muscle of attention. In particular, that muscle that the heart that governs that particular attention that is compassion. To love is to be attentive. Thanks to street photography, we love our city and our neighbors more. As we focus on a specific work in meditation, we are going to exercise our attention by focusing on a single element. In this case, it will be the color red, or yellow, or blue, if you prefer. You can exercise, of course, with all these three colors. And this task, the red color, will work as our mantra works in meditation. By focusing, on something specific, we become aware of reality in general. So now we need to take some pictures where the real subject is the color red. We don't want to take pictures of something red. We need to capture the essence of the color, the essence of red. To do this, to do this, we need to notice the difference if we take out the element or we imagine or if we imagine it colored in another way differently. So the real subject of the picture is a color this time. And this exercise had been suggested by a great Italian photographer. Franco Fontana, in his book Fotografia Creativa, Creative Photography. So, for today, I think this is it. Again, if you want, you can send me your thoughts and pictures, images, using the following email, enos.photographia at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.